Imagine for a moment that you wake up tomorrow and discover that Florida has secretly unleashed one of the Amazon's most feared creatures into the Everglades. No, I'm not talking about piranhas or anacondas. I'm talking about something even more badass, South American giant otters, known by locals as river wolves. These aquatic killing machines that can reach nearly seven feet in length, with jaws that can crush bone, were theoretically introduced to Florida with one very specific purpose, to control two of the state's most devastating invasive species. And today, we're going to explore what could happen if this crazy idea was actually put into action. Before we dive into the giant otters, we need to understand what we're up against. Florida is fighting a silent ecological war that's destroying its native ecosystems, and the two main villains are absolutely devastating. First up, we've got Burmese pythons. These invasive snakes have caused severe declines of 80 to 100 percent in several previously common mammal species, with raccoon populations dropping 99.3 percent, opossums 98.9 percent, and bobcats 87.5 percent since 1997. Originally from Southeast Asia, these snakes can grow over 16 feet long and weigh more than 110 pounds and they were released into the Everglades by owners who couldn't handle them anymore, plus environmental disasters like hurricanes. They're known to eat endangered species like wood storks, Key Largo wood rats and limpkins, plus large animals like alligators, white-tailed deer and bobcats. The second invader is more subtle but equally destructive, the Asian swamp eel. Like many other invasive species, the Asian swamp eel probably arrived in South Florida through the pet trade or food industry, and long-term data suggests they've triggered population collapses of crustaceans and small fish in the eastern Everglades. They're opportunistic predators, consuming a wide range of prey including small fish, amphibians and invertebrates, with the potential to completely wreck food chains and harm native biodiversity. If you're digging this analysis of radical ecological solutions, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell, so you don't miss our upcoming videos about the world's most fascinating wildlife. Now let's get to our proposal. South American giant otters, scientifically known as Tiranura brasiliensis. These creatures are native to the Amazon basin and are the world's largest mustelids reaching up to 7 feet in length and weighing up to 75 pounds. What makes this idea fascinating is that these otters already have experience dealing with similar predators in their natural habitat. In the Amazon, they regularly interact with anacondas, and while they don't attack large adult anacondas, they're known to prey on young anacondas and can even kill adults if they threaten their pups. Their main diet consists of fish, including species like armored catfish, which curiously is also an invasive species in parts of Florida. When we think about Asian swamp eels, the connection becomes even clearer. In South America, giant otters regularly prey on eels of similar size, so technically they already have the instinctive knowledge to deal with this type of prey. The Everglades could theoretically offer a suitable environment for these otters, the subtropical climate, extensive aquatic systems, and abundance of fish would create conditions similar to those found in parts of the Amazon. The interaction with Burmese pythons would probably be similar to what they have with anacondas, some control over young individuals, but limited impact on large adults. In theory, giant otters could offer unique benefits. They could exert significant predatory pressure on Asian swamp eels, since these prey fit perfectly into their natural diet. For Burmese pythons, the impact would be more limited, but still relevant for controlling juveniles. Additionally, the otters could also help control other aquatic invasive species, like certain species of armored catfish that infest Florida's aquatic systems. But here's the big problem. Over time, the giant otters themselves could become a devastating invasive species. They're extremely efficient predators and could cause severe impacts on native fish populations in the Everglades. Occasionally, 
They also take down animals like small alligators and turtles, which could affect already vulnerable species. Giant otters are highly social animals that live in family groups and are territorial. They could establish extensive territories in the Everglades, competing with native predators like alligators and fish-eating birds for resources. But what if we could control these risks? There are some fascinating technological solutions that could make this idea less dangerous. First, we could use sterilized animals to prevent uncontrolled reproduction. This would allow the otters to fulfill their role of controlling invasive species without establishing permanent populations. Second, and this is really interesting, we could train the otters to focus on specific prey. Mustelids are extremely intelligent animals, and in Asia, there are already traditions of using trained smaller otters to fish for specific species. It wouldn't be completely impossible to train giant otters to focus mainly on Asian swap eels, which are easier prey to identify and capture. We could also use monitoring technology, like GPS collars and identification chips, to track each animal and intervene quickly if necessary. Now, before anyone starts looking for giant otters on the black market, let me be absolutely clear. This didn't happen. Florida has not introduced giant otters into the Everglades. This is a theoretical analysis of what could happen if such a project were implemented. The reality is that introducing any new species into an ecosystem, even with the best intentions, is extremely risky. History is full of examples of biological solutions that became even bigger problems than the originals. Florida's current strategies for controlling invasive species involve removal programs, organized hunting, safe biological control research, and continuous monitoring. While these approaches are less dramatic than unleashing Amazonian river wolves, they're much safer and more sustainable. But what do you think? Would it be possible to create a biological control program using trained and sterilized otters? Or would the risks always outweigh the benefits? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this analysis of radical ecological solutions, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out the next video that'll pop up on your screen, where we explore more fascinating mysteries and theories from the animal world. Catch you next time.